everyone. It has been a while since I have been on. I have been trying to navigate a foreign country. I am in Mexico with my husband who is getting a bunch of really high quality, low cost dental work done. We've been having a great experience with that so far. So if anyone is interested in talking about that topic with me, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll tell you what we've experienced. Um, but yes, it has been a lot navigating uh, all the logistics of it, so I haven't been uh, available to do a, a video for a little bit. So um, I wanted to come on because um, I had a request to do a video talking more about Herxheimer reactions, um, which is basically um, like a more clinical term for a um, like detoxification reaction or a negative reaction to a detoxification process. And it actually was originally coined to talk about um, Lyme patients who would take really intense antibiotics and have um, a really negative reaction. Um, as all the Lyme would be dying in their body, they would have a really negative reaction sometimes. And so um, more natural medicine doctors would talk about having to pace uh, the antibiotic um, amounts in a way that didn't totally debilitate the patients. But this, and the doctor was named uh, Herxheimer who described this. And, but now this, um, term of a Herxheimer reaction has been used to describe a lot of different types of negative reactions to detoxification processes. Um, I think this is a really important conversation because it's these kinds of reactions that make people think that what they're doing isn't working when actually often the reality is what they're doing is working too well. <laughs> and so people mistake, I'm getting worse, I must be doing something wrong, you know, that, or they think that. Um, when the actual issue is like what I'm doing is so effective that I'm overwhelming my body's capacity to integrate it properly. Um, so I'm going to talk all about that today. Um, I am also like getting close to the end of my list uh, in terms of requests for video topics. I have a few more I need to do over the next couple weeks and then I'm going to be um, out of topic. So if you have something you want me to talk about, um, please comment. Um, search my page to make sure I haven't talked about it all already, uh, but because uh, I have quite a few topics up here now. But if there's something that you want me to talk about or are more specific, component of an issue that you want me to address in more detail, um, go ahead and, and comment and I'll put it on my list. So, uh, let me refer back to actually another video first. I do have a video on here uh, titled something like Toxicity is the Root of All Illness, or Is Toxicity the Root of All Chronic Illness? Um, I would go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it, um, because I, I would still say that this is true. Um, I really do think that if you really dig down into the root cause of chronic illness, at the very, very bottom, like at the very core tip of the root, it really is an issue of toxicity and toxic accumulation and the body figuring out how to manage and keep you alive when there is an immense amount of toxicity happening in the body. And obviously, there are a whole lot of other factors that interact with um, and exacerbate that issue, um, but that, I would still argue, is the ultimate root of the chronic illness epidemic that we are seeing today. So, toxicity is a normal part of life, right? I've talked about before that um, we have always encountered toxins in our environment. There are plenty of things in the natural world that are also toxic, right? So um, this is not a new thing. Um, it's just manifesting in a little bit of a different way, which I'll talk about more in a second. But needing to detox, uh, detoxify ourselves is completely natural. We all, even living in a pristine environment, will need to detoxify uh, on a regular basis every day. So we have a, a wide variety of organs that help us detoxify just normal toxic elements that we encounter in our day-to-day -day environment. So this is our lymphatic fluid, this is our liver, this is our kidneys, it's our lungs, it's our skin, and it's our colon, right? So these are all detox organs and they all play a part in making sure that we don't accumulate any kind of excess toxicity that we encounter in our, our environment. Um, now, the problem is, is that a lot of people today 
are not detoxifying properly, right? And so what we are getting is this accumulation of toxicity, and in order to keep us alive, the body is doing things that cause us the symptoms of long-term chronic illnesses. So this can be from a couple reasons. One can be a combination of genetic susceptibility and too much exposure to toxins. So it's not just about massive exposure to toxins because you will see this happen, right? You will see two people go work at a factory where they are exposed to lead and one person will become severely ill with lead toxicity. Sorry, there is a weird sound of birds flying overhead right now and it was really distracting me for a second. <laughs> so uh, the two people working at the factory, um, one of them will get like severe symptoms of lead sickness and one of them won't, right? And so, I mean, there is the issue of like, they're exposed to a lot more lead than we would have naturally been in a more pristine, you know, ancestral environment. Um, but one person may have much more severe effects from it than another, right? You know, one person might, you know, get dementia when they're 80. And maybe that is related to being exposed to lead. But someone else will get like severe chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia when they're 40, you know? So it's like, okay, why that discrepancy? They both have the same exposure. It is because partly because of genetic susceptibility. So some people are naturally slow detoxifiers. Um, and this is related to those genes like MTHFR and COMT um, that a lot of people get genetic tests for. Honestly, I don't really ever have my clients test for those things because if you're coming to me, you probably have one of those mutations, right? Because we're the people that accumulate toxicity and tend to get chronic illnesses. We are on the slow end of our detoxification efficiency. And that means we much more easily accumulate toxicity when we are exposed to large amounts of it. Um, now, there are some other, you know, related factors, right? Um, we might also have damage or lack of support to our detoxification pathways. So even if you have a genetic susceptibility to slow detoxification, you can either you know, have or not have factors in your life that help support you to be a little more efficient in how you detoxify, right? So some of that is um, a healthy gut microbiome, uh, supportive nutrient status, and supportive lifestyle practices. So when you're doing those things, even if you're naturally a slow detoxer, like even if you have like a double MTHFR mutation, you're going to be more resilient to toxic exposure. Um, okay, so that's a really general, uh, you know, description of why people get toxic in the first place, right? And they may have such genetic susceptibility, they may have a lack of support to their detox origin, organs, and they may have um, a really high amount of exposure that they've experienced in their life. And so it's usually a combination of all these things. So in order to heal from the effects of excess toxicity. I don't know if you guys can hear that. This is the weirdest bird noise that is happening outside. <laughs> um, we need to lower our toxic load so that we can uh, help our bodies deal with the excess accumulation that has built up over the years. Um, and then we need to um, increase support to our detoxification organs. So again, this is related to resetting the gut, to improving our nutrient status, and to lifestyle practices that help us detox a little more efficiently. So I'll talk about all those in a minute. Now, when you start doing those things, right? When you start doing a gut reset diet, when you start doing these traditional detoxification practices, um, when you start lowering your exposure to toxins in your day-to-day -day life, suddenly your body has the capacity to deal with a backlog, right? Suddenly your body says, oh my gosh, we have enough nutrients to support our detox pathways. We actually have a good amount of helpful bacteria that helps us detoxify and we are not as congested with the... Um, the uh, amount of toxic chemicals that are released when you have 
microbial overgrowth, right? Because if you have opportunistic microbes, they tend to release toxins in their life cycle, which adds to our overall toxic load. So we've taken that out. We've supported ourselves with proper nutrients. We have good bacteria that helps us detoxify. Um, and we maybe are even doing more supportive things, you know, in our lifestyle, you know, so things like enemas, things like saunas, you know, sweating, you know, cleansing out our colon, all of these kinds of things that help us move crap out of our bodies, right? Um, suddenly the body is like, oh my gosh, I no longer just have to keep you alive. Now I can actually start pulling excess toxins out of storage and releasing them. So what happens, like what is really happening with a Herxheimer reaction is that your body is cleaning out the gutters and you are having reactions associated with acute toxic exposure rather than long-term chronic toxic exposure. Right? I hope that makes sense. So when we have slow detox pathways and we are exposed to a lot of toxins and we're not supporting our body properly, our body is just going to kind of maintain the status quo and it's going to stash the excess into areas in our body where it's going to harm us less. It may cause us symptoms of chronic illness, but it's not going to acutely poison us. And when we support ourselves in all these ways, the body says, oh my gosh, I'm not so congested. I'm not just like trying to stay alive day to day. I can actually do deep cleaning. And so now all these toxins are getting pulled out of our tissues and now we feel the effects of the acute poisoning that we should have been getting all along, but our body is very smart and stashes things away. So, I mean, these can be any kinds of toxins, right? Like I said, this can be the excess of, um, you know, what uh, bacterial and parasitic and fungal overgrowth produces just as a part of their life cycle. Um, but usually before that happens, there's some amount of exposure to heavy metals, to pesticides, to, you know, uh, microplastics, um, to all these compounds, um, all these um, volatile organic compounds, like these solvents, right? All of these things, these synthetic chemicals um, and these byproducts of industry and modern life that we are exposed to every day, right? So usually that is a really deep root cause and the body can finally deal with all that when you start supporting it properly. So you start having acute responses to toxic, the toxic exposure of, of everything your body is pulling out. So what does this look like? Often there is some amount of digestive uh, distress that happens along with a detox response. Um, honestly, ideally, it's diarrhea. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but <clears throat> with diarrhea, at least your body is moving things out, right? And a lot of times when someone's detoxing, they will start having diarrhea because their body is just like purging. So that's actually the best case scenario. Not as optimal as if you start getting constipation because basically what that means is that your whole bile system, remember I said the liver and the colon are part of your detox system, that's because the bile recirculation system deals with fat soluble toxins. And if this is overloaded with too much at once and your bile system can't keep up, your digestion is gonna suffer and usually constipation is a side effect. So uh, that you do need to like intervene with, you know, however you can, you know, magnesium, laxative herbs, enemas, whatever. Um, but that can also be a symptom of an overloaded um, detox response. Um, mental health is a big one. And notice how all of these are also symptoms of chronic illness, right? But often they become more pronounced and more acute when you're going through a detox process. Because again, we're going from long-term, low-grade chronic exposure to like the symptoms of acute poisoning, right? So a lot of times what I see most is that people will get really depressed. Like things will get really dark. They'll have really negative thinking. Everything seems pointless. And they don't care about anything. They're completely apathetic, right? This is very, very common as a response. Um, now, for some people, it can look like more severe mental health issues. And especially if your chronic illness issue is a more severe mental health issue, you know, something like psychosis um, or mania or things like that, um, sometimes that can be triggered in an acute episode. <coughs> so you do have to be careful and make sure that you have the proper support around you if something like that happens. 
Um, often it is neurological, right? Um, because toxins directly affect the nervous system and the brain. So a lot of times people have an increase in brain fog, in fatigue, uh, in just their sensitivity to sensory stimuli, you know, so they'll get more sound sensitive, more light sensitive, things like that. Um, if someone is dealing with dysautonomia, usually the symptoms will get worse, sometimes significantly. Um, and again, you have to be careful and make sure you have enough supports around you, you know, or if you have a hard time, you know, standing up. Uh, I mean, you know, sometimes that's how people were already, but if things get worse, that you have proper supports around you. You also sometimes see people have old symptoms that they haven't had in years, you know, like people often have a long history of chronic illness and maybe they had some manifestations of it, you know, when they were younger in their 20s and now maybe they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s and it looks a little different. Maybe some things kind of stopped and new things developed. But suddenly, you know, maybe someone will be 40 and they're doing this work now and they'll have a symptom they haven't had since they were 25. And it can feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going backwards, right? But the issue is that symptom never resolved. Your body just figured out how to stuff it into the back of the cupboard, <laughs> basically, right? Um, you know, I mean, sometimes spontaneous healing does happen, even with not super optimal supports, for sure. But often, you know, the body is just like, okay, I've figured out how to maintain equilibrium, even with this imbalance, so you stop having that symptom. But it doesn't mean the underlying issue is totally resolved. And so when you start doing really deep healing work, sometimes you have these old symptoms. And I hear this all the time. People are like, oh my gosh, I'm having a symptom I haven't had for two years or five years or ten years. You know, and that's actually a sign that your body is doing the deeper healing it couldn't do at that time. Sometimes people also just get weird symptoms. <laughs> and I got this quite a bit, actually, where it was like things that I didn't associate with my illness. So for example, when I was really sick, I didn't have neuropathy. I was actually very, very lucky that I didn't have a lot of those um, weird nerve sensations that a lot of people have when they have similar conditions to what I did. But when I was going through acute detox processes, I did have those symptoms. Those are the only times I had those symptoms of neuropathy, a very strange, distressing, um, uncomfortable uh, sensations in my nerves. So that was just what I would call a weird symptom, right? It wasn't something I'd had before. It wasn't a worsening of a symptom I was acutely dealing with. It was just something different and weird. And when I got through some of my most intensive detoxification uh, periods, the symptom went away again. You know, so again, symptoms of acute poisoning that maybe, you know, you hadn't really dealt with before because your body had been stashing things away and just keeping you generally in homeostasis. Now, whatever the symptoms are, you know, if it's a worsening of your current symptoms, if it's an old symptom coming back, if it's a weird symptom you've never had before, these tend to come in waves. And that's because the body heals in layers, right? The body is not going to just heal everything at once. That's way too much work. What it's gonna do is gonna pace itself. It's going to take one thing to focus on, or maybe a couple things to focus on, and really work on healing that thing. And it can be a layer of tissue, it can be a stash of toxins that it's put into tissues or into joints or whatever. Um, it could be a particular organ, you know. Um, often, you know, like digestive stuff will heal first and it'll kind of like move towards the outside of the body, but that's just super general. That's not how it happens for everyone, but it will happen in layers one way or another. So usually people go in waves, right? Like every few months, they'll have a really intense period of detox reaction, and then they will um, feel better for a while, right? And usually they feel better than they did before they went through that detox reaction. And they'll be, you know, stable for a while and the body will be like, okay, great, now we have enough resources we can do the next layer. And then they'll feel bad again. So again, a lot of people get really confused because they feel like, oh my gosh, I was feeling better and I'm feeling worse again. Clearly what I'm doing isn't working. But this is actually a good sign. It means your body feels like you have the capacity and resources to get deeper into your healing. Um, so let's see. I think that's all I really want to say uh, just about what Herxheimer can look like and, and how it can you know manifest and what causes it. Um, in terms of how to deal with it, there's a few things. One is you can power through. 
You know, you really can. Um, and now this depends on how debilitating your detox reactions are. For some people, and especially people who have histamine issues and some of their detox flare is like a worsening of their histamine issues, I mean, it can get into dangerous territory depending on how severe that condition is for you. So, and, and similar with like something like POTS, right? I mean, that can get really serious depending on how severe it's manifesting for you. So sometimes it's not safe to push through and you have to you know, be realistic with the intensity of your own symptoms. Um, but you know, if they're more in the moderate zone, if they're not actually dangerous, you can push through discomfort and just get to the other side. Um, now, if that's not realistic for you, either because of things you have to do in your day-to-day -day life or because your symptoms are very serious and can get dangerous, um, it's just a matter of pacing, right? So anything you do, any healing practice or healing protocol you do, you can divide up into like discrete steps and you can divide those discrete steps into more little tiny steps. So you can always dial in and take a, a smaller step forward. You know, um, I mean, literally by adding like one drop of something at a time, you know, or taking away like one ounce of some food you're trying to eliminate um, or adding like one minute longer into your sauna protocol or something like that. Um, so you can always slow down. You can always back up and pace the detox a little bit easier. Um, you can also add additional detox support. So I mentioned some of the things like um, saunas and enemas. Um, you can also do Epsom salt, like detox baths. Um, you can also get like walking or rebounding or do lymphatic massage. Um, all of these things are going to just help your body process things out a little bit faster. Um, and so depending on how much time and energy and resources you have, I mean, you could do all of those things every day, you know, if you really want to ultra support yourself. Um, but often when you're going through a more acute detox period, I recommend at least one of those kinds of things every day. Um, okay, so I hope this was helpful in understanding Herxheimer reactions and why things getting worse or getting weird or resurging is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's a sign that your body is actually doing what it has wanted to do for a long time, but just hasn't had the resources to. So I hope you can start to look at these reactions in a new way and understand when it may be pertinent to push through or when it may be pertinent to like back up a little bit, but not totally give up your healing practice. Um, and if you want to learn more about this, like I said, I have some old videos like is toxicity the root of all illness and things like that, um, that will explain some of these, um, aspects of this topic a little more in detail. Um, I also do have one of my old courses, um, which is the truth about detoxification that talks about this stuff a lot. It's like an hour long lecture that I gave um, much more in depth on everything I'm talking about today. Um, and it's 25% off right now with the code COUNTDOWN25. And I think it was only like $50 to begin with. So it's a pretty good discount. Um, so you can get that lecture for me for a discount. Um, I'm gonna be taking all my courses down next month. So if there's anything on there that you wanna make sure you get and and uh, save for yourself, make sure you get that now with that detail. Um, with detox, <laughs> with that um, discount code. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, comment for topics you want me to talk about uh, in the next month. And uh, stay tuned for more announcements about my book and everything I got going on.